Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. This video is going to be what's wrong with my file video. Uh, I volunteered to help someone with a file they purchased off of Etsy and they're struggling with it in Lightburn and can't figure out what's wrong with it. I'm going to show you all of the roadblocks, all the stumbling blocks, what to look for and how to fix them. And I'm doing this for them for free. And I figure, you know what? I'll just turn it into a video and everybody can learn a little something. So hang around. We're going to fix a file from Etsy again. All right, so in one of the Facebook groups I'm in on uh, Facebook, uh, I seen someone post that they were struggling with a file they'd purchased off of Etsy. It's supposed to be a pin box, and they couldn't get the tabs to resize. They couldn't. They were just having all kinds of problems with it. And I said, you know, and they were, of course, the 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 peanut gallery is all chiming in on their suggestions, but you can't suggest what to do about fixing a file if you're not looking at the file. So I just told them, I said. Send me the file, let me see what's wrong with it, and see what you're actually up against, and I'll see what I can do for you. So, he sent me the file. Now, let's jump in here to Lightburn, and uh, his specific concern was he wasn't able to resize the tabs, the slots and tabs. They weren't changing out, or maybe it was just the tabs. But there's all kinds of problems uh, that can cause that, and until you see, I seen the file, I didn't know what to suggest. So he sent me the file, and let's jump over to Lightburn and take a look at it. So this is a file he purchased off of Etsy. I, I guess it will assemble up and make a pin box to store your pins in. Um, I'm personally not a real big fan of these types of hinges, but you know they they're they're they work uh, until they break, and they they do break. Uh, but here you can see the beginnings of some of his problems. This thing has got lots and lots of open shapes on it. And they don't even line up. They're not even, uh, I don't know, they're not symmetrical. They don't line up properly. Uh, but these are the problems you get when you buy stuff from Etsy. And it's got a different type of slot and tab in it. Uh, I guess it might work if you were using what what is this made for now uh, 2.25 millimeter if we look right there if I look at that width it's 2.25 millimeters in that segment length so this was designed to use with 2.25 millimeter material and I've not seen a tab like that before but I imagine uh, let's see what the length is of this this is uh, 11 and a quarter and if I was to measure from this tab to that tab, yeah, it's 11.6. So it's just a little bit wider than the actual slot. So that's going to create a lot of friction. And, and I'm guessing that's really made to help kind of snap it into place and help be a real tight friction fit. But again, here's open shapes and they don't line up. Let's say, okay. If I bring a, a straight edge down and put it right there, you can see the ends don't line up. So it's just a it's a pretty poor design. Let's see. None of those ends line up. So if I've got it right there, it lines up just fine. But then we come across to the first intersection. It this one's lower. Then we go over here to the next one. That one's lower. That one's, in fact, it looks like those might be, yeah, those, those are close enough that you, you could make them work. You could make that work too, but uh, let's see what needs to happen here. Uh, in fact, up here where that one intersects, so that's high that's high they're not high in the same amount but if i grab another straight edge another tool path bring it down here i got it snapped right there 
I can, can I select just that one? No, right now they're grouped. So let's ungroup it. Now they're ungrouped. And let's take a look at just this piece. I'm going to put my move increments down as small as I can get on point oh 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 one, And say OK. Hold my control button and start moving that down. And it's moving very slowly. And I'm going to bring it down to it lines up with that toolpath. Right there. So now those are those are lined up. Now let's see what happened down here at the bottom. And for the most part, those are lined up. So that one segment of that piece, which was an, an open path, they weren't even lined up. So now they are, but they're still open path. So we got to close that path. So if we go to node editing, and now that we've got them parallel to each other or in line with one another, we can just connect them. We hope. There we go. Now this one. And we're actually probably going to be deleting all of this here in a minute anyway, but we're going to make them all close paths first. All right, and you want to know, did that close that path? Well, looks like it is because I've only you got this large green square right here. That's an origin square, and there's only one large green one on here, so that means there's only one point of origin, so that should be a closed path. If I go here, my selector tool, I've got it selected. If I go into Edit, Closed Path is grayed out. It is not an option, so that is a closed path now. And uh, here is another one just like before. That's a section. That's a section. So there's three different sections in that. Don't know if they're lined up or not, but we'll take a look. Uh, let's see here. Bring this down. That looks good. Let's drag the same one on down to here. Those line up. And those line up so that those were aligned so that we can get rid of that now delete it we just got to close that shape and there are, you just see me do it with um node editing uh somebody just messaged me all right so but i'm gonna try to do it a different way now i'm selecting both of those pieces and edit i'm going to say uh close selected paths with a tolerance and right now it's showing two open shapes and I'm going to join with or actually you know what I'm gonna move ends together and right now it's got a distance threshold of zero well I need to increase my threshold until I see this right here says found two shapes open close shapes zero to remain so I keep increasing up oh, I didn't want to close it down there It's wanting to it's wanting to close the end of each of itself. It's not wanting to join them. So we're gonna see if we can join with a line. Nope, it joins it closes itself up. Alright, so you can't attach two shapes like that because it's gonna move the end of this shape to the end the other end of itself. So you can't use close paths that way. Uh, edit Close pass, auto join selected shapes. I don't know if we can auto join them because they're not touching. Uh, so we have to use node editing. It's all right. But see how you got two origin points right there, two large green ones. So grab one and attach it. And now that disappeared. So now the point of origin, you got one there, and you got one here. We got to join these up. And we can just grab this one. And once it turns into a bunch of ants, it's connected. That green origin point went away. And now we got these two. Now we're still going to have one, but we only want one. 
edit closed path is grayed out it's a closed path now now what about this one uh, open on either end now we'll drag one from the side here a uh, toolpath make sure everything's square and lined up like it's supposed to be and that looks good yep all right so let's just join the lines up node editing two origins and connect them now we got one closed path is not an option it's closed now this one has got a bunch of open ends so let's drag a toolpath down that one's lined up that's good and is it open on the bottom anywhere it's open on either end So, and those hinges are open. So let's go here for now. And that's still not quite right. So we'll go right to that point of that one. So that one's recessed in. Now, it's in a curve, and that's fine, but I would expect these two ends to be at the same point, and we would continue that radius around. But we'll take a look this other side because this was in on this side so if it's out on the other side then we know we can just scoot that line over and it is it's out on this side so now I'm going to select this line and I've got my control arrow and I'm going to real slowly move that in until it's even with that tool path and then I'll check the other side and see if that's even and that looks pretty good all right now I'm going to leave that tool path where it's at and just drag another one out here and that looks good so now we connect those two points I really don't understand oh don't want to do that in fact we'll go back here and just do un undo and we're going to draw a line <clears throat> from there to there we'll move this toolpath out of the way there we go now we'll get our nodes from that line connect it And if you want to give that just a little bit of curvature just so that it's rounded off and not a flat nose right there you can just grab your line right in the middle there and just tweak it out just ever so slowly that looks okay now I come back over here we're gonna do another line in fact you don't need this toolpath here right now at all pencil tool start right there with our crosshairs come down here to crosshairs and then we'll select okay alrighty there's that and that now we need to connect the two and that's connected now we're going to give a little curvature to that that's good and I'm curious as to who is messaging me just in case it's the individual that actually sent me this file uh, no that's Brad let's see uh, nope okay all right, we're good. We're golden. We're golden. I just didn't want to ignore him if he was uh, contacting me. So back to this. Okay. 
So now that should be a closed shape as well. And uh, don't have that option there. Select that. Edit. Closed path is not grayed out, so it's still not closed. So if I look at that, I should probably still have two or more points of origin. They're not there. Not there. Where's the point of origin? Okay, up here. There we go. There's two points of origin. Oh, that's right, because I forgot I got to connect those. That's a toolpath, dummy. Come on, dummy. Get with the program. So we can close that, grab that, go into node editing, and snap those together. Still not there. There it goes. Now edit and close path is still not grayed out. So Alt J, Alt J. Did that close it? Edit. It's grayed. Good. All right. <coughs> So we've connect, or corrected four of those pieces. And those are the ones that had all the slots and tabs in them. Uh, and those were the crucial ones. Let's get rid of the tool pass here. Now the side pieces, they're open in multiple locations as well. There's one, in fact, if we click each piece, there's one piece, two pieces. So each of these are in two pieces. These are in multiple pieces, but since these are just rectangles, these are gonna be simpler. We're just gonna draw a new rectangle. We're just gonna grab our rectangle tool and start up here in this corner. In fact, before I do that, just to confirm we get it exactly right, if I select just these two, Control D, duplicate it, and move them over here, and look and see what the measurements are. There's 24, 739, and 14096. I'm gonna leave that there as a reference. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna put this one on a blue toolpath. Use my rectangle tool. Actually, you know what? Gotta select my layer first. Get my red cut layer, rectangle tool, and I'm gonna come up here to that corner for my crosshairs right there. And draw out a rectangle till I get those crosshairs right there. Now I can turn off the red layer. Select. I didn't mean. I think I just drew a rectangle down there. I did. Let's get rid of that rectangle. Turn off the red layer. Got my selector tool, select that blue toolpath, delete it, turn my red back on, and now I'll check my sizes. 24,739, 24,739, but 149,96, 14, so that's perfect. So that worked just fine. So I can do the same thing with all of these. In fact, are they the same rectangle? Didn't mean to move it, I meant to grab it, select it rather. 24765. That's a little bit different. Oh, it's because they're not joined? No, because I, I way I did it would have joined them. Alrighty, 24739. 24739 or 765. That one's the same as that one. I'm I'm guessing they're all supposed to be the same. So I'm what I'm gonna do is just grab these. Delete them, Control D, duplicate, centered up. Grab this one, Control D, duplicate it, select it with a shift key and center that up. I can get rid of that now. Make sure these ovals are closed shapes, edit. Yep, those are, that's closed. That's closed. And that's closed. All right, so now we've got, let's check our, let's check these inner rectangles and make sure they're all closed shapes. 
So if I select all of those, those are six objects and edit. Uh, none of them say closed path, so those good. Edit. That's closed. All right, so now I just got to correct these down here. Then we got to fix our slots and tabs. Right now we're just closing all the shapes up. And this one is not on the same level with one another. This one's lower. So is this one up here lower? Yes, it is. All right, so let's do the move it from the bottom. So let's grab that, bring it down here. Those are lined up. Now let's select this one using control and arrow down using my smallest increment of movement. Get that lined up with the toolpath. There. Get rid of my toolpath. And go to node editing and connect these nodes. That's good. Now I come up here and because this is on a curve, I'm going to do my pencil tool again. I'm going to, there we go. Now pencil tool, get my crosshairs there and there. Then go back to rate uh, the node editing and make sure that everything's closed up. All right, edit. All right, so that closed them because I went crosshairs to crosshairs, but I'm gonna get rid of that little bit of a flat spot by just dragging the middle up just a teeny bit, not much. Right about there. Now, this is the same as this, so I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna say Control D Actually, first, I'm going to put these two on the blue toolpath, then take this outer shape, say Control D, duplicate it, move it over here a little bit, get it kind of close. I'm going to zoom in tight, and I'm going to grab this point right there and line it up with that matching point. Is that going to work? Actually, I need to, it needs to come up because I matched it to the lower point. We moved that side, so I need to move this up to there. There we go. So that's lined up exactly right, so I can turn off the red, grab those and delete it, turn my red back on. So now I've got all my shapes are closed, but the slots and tabs are still not gonna work in Lightburn. In Lightburn, Lightburn recognizes slots and tabs by four nodes and only four nodes. You must have four nodes to create a slot or a tab and no more than four nodes to create a slot and a tab. Anything more, it won't recognize it. Anything less, it won't recognize it. So if we go in here and look, all right, we, we checked that a minute ago and it was, uh, and we don't need this outer line right here either. I'll get rid of that. All right, so if I select this whole thing and I go into the Resize Slots and Selection tool, Tools, Resize Slots and Selection, the original uh, uh, thickness was 2.25 millimeters. And we're gonna, something just failed, three millimeters. And we'll go to Slot Width. All right, shapes that are not paths or rectangles. Well, we know that but it found all of our slots. But it's not finding any of our tabs. And why? Because how many nodes are in this? We look at the slots, there it is, it recognizes it. And if you count, there's one, two, three, four nodes. I'm trying to find the tabs. There's a bunch of tabs on here because of these outer little ears they put on here. But I'm going to show you another problem you got. Let's cancel that. Go into node editing. And I'm just going to grab all the nodes on that ear 
and hit the letter D to delete them. Come over here and grab all the nodes on this ear and D. How many nodes have we got? We still got a lot of nodes. All right, well, let's get rid of that one. Still a lot of nodes there. And let's get rid of that one. And get rid of that one. So now we got one, two, three, four nodes. So that's four nodes. So tools, resize, and actually let's check the segment length first. Tools, that's two and a quarter millimeters, just like the other one. So we go to tools, resize, slots and selection, tab height, two and a quarter. It still doesn't see that, even though it's four nodes. Because in addition to having to have four nodes, they have to be parallel to each other. All four have to be parallel in order to form a perfect rectangle, even if it's only just a three-sided tab. Those four nodes have all got to be parallel to each other. And this tab is not, so cancel, because these are moved in and it's got that slant on it, so that won't work. So these are gonna have to be fixed. And you can do this real simple these are the end pieces they are, those tabs are supposed to snap into these slots so i'm going to select this go to node editing and i'm going to get rid of all of this select all those and hit the letter d for delete and these little segments right here out coming off of the corners that's telling me that's a curve it's not a line so I'm going to hover right over that middle and hit the letter L. And that got rid of those little nodes and made that a perfect line. Now that I've got a perfect straight edge across there, I can grab this piece and now we've got to worry about where this piece goes. I'm going to say Control D, duplicate it, grab it on my selector tool bring it down here, rotate it, and I'm gonna get the center point right there where I've got my circle, come up here and go to the center point again, right there, Oop, right there. Now, uh, let's look at the segment length. Actually, you know what, let's go ahead and weld that together. So I'm gonna say this, plus hold my shift key, select that and weld it. And we'll get rid of that node. And now those should all be parallel to each other. And let's look at the segment length here. It's 6.76, 6 6.75. So I'm uh, one one hundredth of a millimeter off. And I believe it'll work. And now we'll take and look at, uh, and let's see what the segment length of that. I think it's three. Nope, that was still two and a quarter. So let's look at that and go to tools, resize slots and selection, tab height. I've got two and a quarter in there and looky there, miraculously it does acknowledge it. It does acknowledge that. Now, if you're changing your material width, you're gonna to need to change the size of these pieces to these slots, the slot width, and there you go. Those are four parallel or nodes, so that works. So, okay, or just cancel, we're not gonna change anything yet. Uh, I gotta do the same thing over here, but instead of doing all that again, I'm just gonna do the same thing I did before, put that on a toolpath, Control D, duplicate it, and I'm gonna drag that corner to that corner, there we go. Turn off my red layer, Select my toolpath and delete it. Turn my red layer back on. Now that's all corrected. That uh, takes care of the side pieces, takes care of the closed paths, but here we got another slot that would need to change on, uh, well, that one need to change. Um, 
this space is not going to change at all depending on your material thickness so you don't want this to change this um, is 1.96 millimeters One point four eight millimeters, so you got about a what about a half a millimeter of play. That so that gives you room for it to rotate. So you would not want that to change. That needs to stay the same. So we don't have to worry about those having too many nodes in it because you don't want it to change. There's nothing here you've got to worry about. But here we've got those crazy tabs again. And we need to make sure all of our slots change. And this is just a handle to open and close the lid, I think. Or is it? No, that's where it, this is the lid. And it's just got a little notch for that to slip over. You, uh, Actually, you might want to change that. So, yeah, that needs to be as tall as your material is thick. So, I'll show you those radiuses on the corner. Those radii on the corner will not work. We gotta get rid of those. So, a little more work to do. All right, this one, we're gonna to go to node editing. And before I do anything with it, I'm gonna move my rectangles into position. So, first, I'm going to select this, hold my shift button, select that, uh, control D, duplicate them. Now that I'm going to group that duplication, and then I'm going to pull it straight up toward that corner, bounces into that corner. All right, so now that's lined up. Those are lined up. So now I will go into node editing on the big piece and select all of those nodes and hit the letter D to delete them. Same thing, D for delete. Here we've got that curve going on again. So I'm gonna hover over this middle and hit the letter L to make that a straight line. And now hold my shift key and select my grouped triangles or rectangles and weld them together. And make sure I got good clean welds. And I do. All right, so that was simple enough. We're gonna do the same thing up top. Control D, duplicate, group that duplication, and then select that duplication. I gotta get my selector tool, there we go. And now arrow it up to where it's close to where I want it to be, zoom in, grab that corner, put it there, and now go into node editing, once more, grab all those, the letter D, delete, grab all these over here, letter D, turn that into a line, letter L, hold my shift, I can go back to selector tool, hold my shift button, select those rectangles and weld, look for good clean welds, and I do have them, that's good. Now, uh, control D, duplicate, and take it all the way up because right now if I select that I should go and measure them is that two and a quarter yep two and a quarter and we'll check that one too it's not going to be two and a quarter because of the radius on it uh, move you so that's 1.51 but we'll do that measure that 1.51 and say okay Go into radius or resize slots and selection. Uh, oh, and that, that right there is something I need to point out. It's wanting to change this as a slot because what do you have to have for Lightburn to recognize a slot or a tab? Anybody, come on, what do you need? Right, thank you for chiming in. Four nodes. And if we look at this, there's one, two, three, four. So there's four nodes that are parallel to each other. 
and and lined up with each other. So Lightburn says, hey, this could be a slot, and it's wanting to move that slot in. But if you do that, it's going to mess up your design. So you that's not a slot. It's going to do the same thing down here. It's going to recognize that as a potential slot. I'll show you how to fix that. But we want to look at the tabs right now. Right now it's recognizing these at two and a quarter, but this one up here was one something. And so we're going to increase our tolerance right here. Uh, we'll make it double even. No matter what we make that tolerance level. So if it's anywhere from uh, you know, zero to five millimeters right now, if it was a slot or a tab, it should be recognizing it. But that radius causes us to have uh, not four, you don't have four nodes that are perfectly parallel and only four nodes because we go to node editing, you say, well, wait a minute, there's four nodes there. There's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. And those four are all parallel to each other. But the fact that you have this node and this node, that's six nodes come. Uh, total right there in that rectangular shape. If I delete those two on top, that'll make, oh, there was more than two up there. So select that and that and delete those, letter D. Now there's four perfectly parallel nodes to each other and Lightburn would recognize that. In fact, I can just say uh, delete that and check our height on that one. It's one and a half, 1.51. So now I can select, go to Tools, Resize Slots and Selection, tell it 1.51, change my tolerance level to 0.8, tab height, and now I want it to go to, we're going to, right now we're going to make everything two and a quarter because that's what I think everything is, apply. Now that, just move that up and say OK. Now. If you picked up kind of what I was saying there on that top piece with those radius, it turned out that there was four nodes that were parallel to each other, but it ended up having an additional four nodes up top that formed those radii. That was a total of eight nodes in that one rectangular shape. So you got to have how many nodes to make it slot or a tab? And you can have how many more? Anything more than four, it will not recognize it. So on those areas in the design where it's wanting to recognize it as a slot and we don't want it to, we prevent that from happening by doing what? Adding a node. So if I go into node editing and anywhere in here, it doesn't matter where you put it, I like to do it in the middle so it looks good and no matter where you're at on this line, if you just come over and get on the line and hit the letter M for middle, It'll put a node in the middle of the line. We've got to do the same thing down here. M for middle. That's good. And that should take care of it. Now, um, let's see here. If we go to selector tool, these don't have any slots and tabs on them. So we can just select these right here. And we're going to go to tools resize sl slots and selection. The way they've got the slot resize tool working now, um, if you're on version 1.6 or greater, you've got a warning down here. It says shapes that are not paths or rectangulars, rectangles. Uh, and that's those circles that are in here. And that's fine. We don't have to worry about those because we're not going to need to change any of that. Or do we? No. All right, I've got two and a quarter millimeter material and I want to make it three millimeter material and I want to change all of my slot depths. Well, there are no slot depths because we fixed these so Lightburn doesn't recognize them. Go to slot width, that, 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 all of those, that, that, and all of that looks good. Apply. Do not say OK. Say apply. Then go to tab height. Tab, 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 tab. And you can say 
a buy or okay because once we've done this that we're done so now you just make sure you've got clearance when you made those larger you don't want to be overlapping yourself so that's good all right so file let's see here do -do 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 that was for Eric so uh, okay so our winner uh, for our rolly has the rolly has been shipped so I've got tracking information for for Don yay so if you want to wear we just had our two-year anniversary for hobo with wood and we gave a brand new laser away file save as uh, desktop and Eric pin save all right I'll send that out to Eric and uh, got to take care of all the problems with this but this is a file that Eric purchased off of uh, Etsy I'm guessing he paid a couple of bucks for it thought he's getting the deal but it don't work with Blackburn it and and I would probably wager that at least half the files you buy off of Etsy will not work with Lightburn without some sort of problem. Either there's multiple layers on top of each other, then they're all the same color. They're all on the black layer. They're all on the double alt layer, but there's five layers. And make me only be five layers of one section of it. And they're all open shapes. And there's and and those are fixed in a, a whole nother set of rules. Uh, but this is a very, very common problem where you have open shapes and or you have irregular shaped slots and tabs. The irregular shaped slots and tabs are almost always a problem on Etsy and, uh, and, and also even with boxes.py. Boxes.py boxes is very popular, but if you don't use it 100% correctly, you'll create files on boxes.py that are not light burn friendly. So that was my quick how to fix this file and uh, I'll send this to you Eric right back at you and uh, thank you for allowing me to help let's turn it into some content hopefully you guys have learned a little something Don I just got your email that your laser is in route <coughs> uh, Don won a new Roly laser during my two-year anniversary live stream if you found this video helpful uh, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash hobo with wood. Uh, there's always the ability just to do a simple super thanks down in the bottom uh, at the comments. Um, and or if you're looking for projects to do that are guaranteed to be light burn friendly, jump over to hobowithwood.com. You'll find photographs of all of the files that are there for sale because every piece that I design and I don't have any right here handy any piece that I any file that I have for sale I've made it at least once if not a half a dozen times tweaking it and making it perfect before I ever put the file for sale no one did that with this file using a laser engraver and light burn or else it wouldn't be out there for sale at least it shouldn't be so that guys thank you for watching please consider supporting the channel either becoming a patron on patreon or just a super thanks i greatly appreciate it i hope you did you did find this a little informative and uh i'll see you in the next video this was not what i had planned for today but eric needed some help and i said you know what let's turn it into some content and a teachable moment so guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you in the next video i'm steve and i'm out